Now, these have been around for nearly 50 years and they can sell extremely well. This find I may just have to keep. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about a thrift store find, a purchase that I made from a thrift store here locally. Now, this is a sculpture. Uh, this is by an artist. You can see the nameplate there with John Perry on it and his copyright. Now, right now, his sculptures, his art is selling on pretty much any site out there. eBay, Amazon, Etsy, the big ones, Poshmark, Macari. I've pretty much seen his stuff everywhere. I remember these as a kid back in the 80s going down to Florida. You'd see them at beach shops, birds, and things along that line. Most of them will have a number on the back. You can still see my price sticker right there. It had a $10 price on it, $9.99, and we actually got it for free. I didn't have to pay for it. Now, how I got it for free, locally, they have these cards for many of the thrift stores. I always ask for a punch card when you spend so much money. For every $5, you get a punch. When you spend $100, you get $10 for free. So I swapped one of these cards for this. So I really don't have a single solitary dime into it. We got some other stuff too as well. But now we're going to show you the vast array of different types of figures and sculpts that John Perry has done. If you stick around to the very end of this video, I'll show you a major movie tie-in to him personally. Very interesting history tied to Mr. Perry and a specific movie, so hang on through the end. Now, hundreds and hundreds of his sculptures sell all year round on many different sites. Here's just the small assortment of some of the ones that have sold fairly recently. And as you can see, there's quite a variety of sculpts that he has done. Now, the first piece of his that I've ever run into was something similar to this one here. And this is one of the very first ones that he kind of did. Now, at one time, he was doing them in very small quantities, sometimes one at a time, customs and things along that line. This is a typical example of some of the birds that he does. Pairs usually do far better than any of the other ones. The larger they are, usually the better they will do as well. All the ones I've ever run into have this little John Perry copyright nameplate in them. Now, in some cases, I've run into some that he's hand-signed. Sometimes you'll see some that are hand-numbered as well. Here's an earlier example of one of his pieces here. This may have been a commissioned piece. Now, this is hand-signed by him. It's got a date on it, 1989. Now these usually do sell for 30 to say 100 bucks on average for a decent one. The more figures in the piece, the sculpted art, the higher it usually sells. So two hammerhead sharks versus one hammerhead shark obviously would do better. Now here's a grouping of sharks in this one right here. Same basic principle. Now there is a way to distinguish some of the older ones from the newer ones. Sometimes there's markings on the bottom, numbering systems on some of the earlier ones. Some of them may look a little different. The texture or color of the wood may be a little brighter or more reddish. The actual nameplate won't be tarnished or have any age on it either. The wood itself is burl wood. These are really well collected in all honesty. Here's yet another one. This one sold for $45. Two regular sharks. Most of the time, they'll just be a single color if they're earlier. Most of the time. Just one solid color. Here's another fine example of manta rays. Burl wood again. This one's a little bigger than most, 11 inches. It's sold in the $40 range. It's almost like a natural diorama. And yet another one of some dolphins playing right here. Now, sharks sell far better than any of the other animals. He did frogs, there's seahorses, all sorts of different figures that he sculpted with, again, burl wood. Now, here's a very nice one of a pod of dolphins or porpoise. 95 bucks for this one. It's much larger than some of the other ones. These here are probably one of the top of the lines for his pieces of work, other than some of the one-offs, hand-signed, hand-numbered, or special custom pieces. And here's yet another one, made to look like a reef. This one sold for 65 bucks. Now here's a fine example of a newer one from 1990. Now, he's actually airbrushed some of the newer ones, so they're more realistic looking. Not quite just the plain, solid figure like the one that I showed you. That's one way to determine it. They usually seem to sell for a little less than the vintage ones. 
Now, on an interesting aspect here, John Perry Studios, his actual own studio, still sells them brand new right now, even on eBay. This is actually one from his personal page, John Perry Studio. They sell extremely well, as I said. This is a brand new one. He sold one of them already in this listing. 60 bucks for this Hammerhead, one of the more popular figures, one of my favorites personally as well. And here's yet another one, airbrushed directly from John Perry Studios as well. The wood is more reddish in this one here, more of a cypress wood look to me. Three of these were sold at 40 bucks plus shipping. Now, John Perry Studios actually has a site. I will have a link to it down in the description box if you'd like to check out anything else. Now, I have no connection link or anything else like that with John Perry or John Perry Studios. I just admire the idea, the sculpts, and the cleanness of the artwork itself. On the site, there's a store. You can see the vast array of figures and pieces that he actually created. In fact, there's the shark itself right there. Now, as I promised, I was going to show you a tie-in by John Perry to a very well-loved movie from the early 90s, and that is Home Alone 2. In that movie, there was a lady that was finally referred to as the Pigeon Lady at the end of the movie. She always had pigeons all around her. In a heartwarming and pivotal scene in that movie, the Pigeon Lady hands Macaulay Culkin a dove, a little white dove. Well, that white dove was designed and made exclusively for the movie by John Perry. He also made a version you could purchase directly from him as well. These are the doves right here. It came in a pair. Very, very nice. They look awesome on a tree. I've seen them in person. They're very hard to come by these days, especially in the box. They can go for far more than he ever initially sold them for right this very minute. Anyone who loves the Home Alone movies will surely remember that scene without a doubt. Now one last aspect here, even if it's missing the actual figure, they can still sell. This is just the bottom Burlwood section with his nameplate, John Perry Copyright, on it, and that's it. And it's still sold for 20 bucks plus shipping so even if it doesn't have the figure it may look like nothing it may be a quarter a dollar or something somewhere it can still carry a value well there we have it hopefully that gave you some ideas some thoughts if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button down below you can also hit the bell icon to be notified if i post new content or go live subscribe and tell all your friends Marketing becomes the pivot on which our continued prosperity turns. Marketing must make the growing production mesh with the expanding market. This is where the challenge now lies. To meet that challenge, American business has taken a new look at its own attitude to marketing and advertising. Over the past 30 years, the ups and downs of advertising activity kept pace with the ups and downs of consumer spending. When sales rose, promotional activities rose. When sales dropped, advertising dropped. But in 1949, and again in 1953 and 54, there was a change. As the volume of sales slid down, advertisers countered by moving the volume of advertising steadily up. For the first time, advertising and selling were allowed to create sales instead of sales creating advertising and selling.